One million year old skull rewrites origins of modern humans. Ancient skull could rewrite human history. Million year old skull rewrites human evolution. Million year old skull could change the history of human evolution. Now this is interesting. We've got a skull here that's set to change the timeline of human evolution. Again, this isn't the first time this sort of thing's happened, but this time it stands to set the dating back hundreds of thousands of years. The dating of what? Humans or our cousins or when we diverged from something? Where did, was this found? What did they do to put all this data together? Is this just pop science reporting? Is this accurate stuff? What the heck is going on here? Well, sit down and we'll talk about it. Hi, my name's Dan and welcome to the Dunking. Back in 1990, a skull was discovered in the Yongshan site in China, a fossil yielding place in the village of Mitsuosi. This was the second skull found there, and it was damaged to the point that it was archived for decades, forgotten on a shelf and assumed to be Homo erectus, until recently, when a team of Chinese and British scientists digitally reconstructed the skull. Known as Yongshan II, it has features that are considered both modern and archaic, or primitive in Dan's speak, I'll use terms like that even though the archaeologists are afraid to. Anyway, the thing is, this skull was all warped to one side. It was really heavily deformed from spending eons under all of this sediment, but eventually they were able to reconstruct the skull. They did use a few pieces that they had to inform from other skulls that they were just like, we don't know, have a piece for this, so we'll assume. But by and large, they got everything from that skull, and when they were done, what they had surprised them. The team was surprised because the skull has a combination of newer and older traits. The cheekbones are flatter than expected, much closer to our modern facial structure than we see in other archaic human species like Neanderthal, while the brow ridge looked more like Neanderthal and the other archaic humans. The combination of traits doesn't end there. It has eye sockets similar to a modern human's with a nasal cavity closer to a Neanderthal's. Its brain shape and size are similarly a mosaic of traits, as the paper's authors called it. They also said that it was a mismatch of phylogenetic characteristics. And speaking of phylogenetic phylogenetics, phylogen, phylogeny, phylo, philanthropy. Phylogenesis is what it's called when they determine the relationship between species and classify them accordingly. This is done using both physical similarities and DNA with the phylogenetic trees as they are known, changing as new evidence comes in. New evidence like they claim we have with Yangxian too, and the mismatched characteristics on that skull does imply that we have the timeline of human evolution wrong, potentially by a factor of hundreds of thousands of years, at least according to the paper's authors. But still exactly how, it's, it's still confusing, and if you read the pop science articles that are more concerned with getting clicks using the one million euro old skull title, which I totally didn't do, um, if you're, but, but they're not trying to actually educate you. So um, I'm going to make sure and educate you on one more thing here. Sorry, but this is very important so that you can understand what this paper is trying to say. The two terms that are important here are clade and cladistics. Cladistics is a way of classifying organisms by their last common ancestor. A clade is one group of organisms under the umbrella of that last common ancestor. Now, the majority of species don't exist in only one clade. Every time a new species emerges, a new clade potentially is formed, and the offspring would all fall under that clade, regardless of how into the future or how many other clades the species is a member of already. For instance, while the clade Borouruthria includes most placental mammals, including horses, bears, giraffes, and humans, the more specific clade for horses is Parasdactolia, and for humans it is Homidae and beyond that, Homo sapiens. Humans, horses, and all other kinds of animals exist in multiple clades at the same time. You could kind of look at it as like a series of umbrellas that each time a speciation occurs. Um, a good example of something similar to that would be the way that my address works. I live in Spokane, which is also in Washington, which is also in the United States, which is also in the Northern Hemisphere, which is also on the Earth, which is also in the solar system. If each one of those was a clade, it's the same kind of idea, this umbrella that encompasses a whole lot of things, but also encompasses this. And there is multiple clades again for all these different species. All right, let's carry on. Now, I know that was a little boring, but it is important to understand the basics of cladistics in order to understand exactly what the scientists who reconstructed that skull are claiming it says about our past. Because the currently accepted model says the Homo sapien clade diverged about 300,000 years ago. But these guys, they're pushing it back to 1.02 
million years ago, over three times as long back. And they say this because this skull is proposed to be a member of a cousin clade to ours, known as the Longi clade. And the features on this skull, according to many scientists, not only the paper's authors, make a good case for it being an early divergence from sapiens and Neanderthals. And the skull's age then pushes the date of divergence of these three clades back to about a million years ago, which is huge, which also means it's got some skeptics and critics. I was a little skeptical at first, to be honest with you, until I dug into it some. Um, a couple of professional criticisms, guys that work in the field, one of them said, can't figure out a lot of stuff with bones and DNA, that paraphrased, but you got to wonder why a person would say something like that and um, work in the field where you're trying to figure stuff out with bones and DNA, but okay. Another guy said, you know, we need to kind of hold our horses and, and get more d data first, and I can go with that. And then there's the less, uh, you know, the less professional criticisms. The first one still sounds okay, but these are coming from uh, less professional people. The first one is we need more replicability. I would agree with that as well. So do the scientists, and they're actually working on that. And the other thing is, is the way that this has been reported by pop science media outlets has been kind of shit, and I can't argue with that. But I will say that the professionals that are saying that sort of thing, that are on Twitter and that have YouTube channels and that they're YouTubers and they're science educators and they chose to just throw rocks at this instead of taking an opportunity to educate their viewers, that's just fucking lazy. Now, the replicability issue will hopefully be solved soon. The first skull found at the site is too damaged to be reconstructed currently, but another skull was found in 2022. It is still being prepared, and the team is looking forward to trying their technique on it as well. They use newer software and technology to reconstruct the skull, so the skepticism does make sense. This is the first time we've seen this used in a discovery that stands to rewrite our history. But it does seem the scientific community is being pretty polite about their skepticism. It really like they're just waiting for more data to come in, which is a position that I can empathize with. I mean, I do find myself there almost at the end of every video. But there is one of their complaints that does ring true to me, and that is the complaint that pop science has confused this and got people thinking that humanity started a million years ago. Because it is a confusing thing. Clade is a term that you don't hear used very often. I mean, I read a lot of papers, but I don't read a ton of evolution papers, and I haven't read the word clade. I don't remember it anyway. I don't remember reading about cladistics in the past. So I'm going to assume a lot of people don't know what it is. And when you have a clade named Homo sapiens and a species named Homo sapiens, it's very easy for people to assume that they know that what that means. Homo sapiens go back a million years. And this has been very muddled in a lot of the articles that have come out, which has not made things very easy for even for some dumbass like me to come and figure it out. It took some reading. Now, Lord knows I've made my fair share of mistakes on YouTube. But this paper has caused a lot of confusion and a lot of people are making mistakes, it seems. It's not saying humans existed a million years ago. It's saying the point of divergence between us, Neanderthal, and Longi occurred about a million years ago. Which is still important and profound. The implications have humanity starting further in the past than we previously believed. But it's not humans identical to us. They would be close in many ways, but not identical. Now this is a big deal, but it's not as cool as some of the people out there are making it seem. It doesn't mean that Homo sapiens go back a million years. It means the clade Homo sapiens, not the species, which is a huge difference there. Now, one of the reasons that this is getting so much attention is there's a problem in human evolution. We used to call it like the, they used to say there's a missing link, and, and now they call it the muddle in the middle. And basically what there is is a big problem when it comes to the middle of the Pleistocene, figuring out exactly what happened with our past. From about 774,000 years ago to about 129,000 years ago, we really are confused as to what happened with human evolution. And that problem is one of the reasons this skull is getting so much attention, as it could well be a huge leap forward in our understanding. But there's one more thing that this find implies that truly has people waiting to see what happens with that skull in 2022. This challenge is out of Africa. If the divergence between those three clades happened in China instead of Africa, then that would mean that the out of Africa theory has a serious problem, or at least a serious bit of contention. Now, there isn't a whole lot of evidence to back this up, so again, we're going to have to use more to overturn something as robust as the out of Africa theory. We do know that there were a lot of different species of hominid running all over the old world. A lot of those may well have been our cousins, and not like like a closer cousin or even an ancestor or a very close relative of ours instead of just some offshoot that took off and left Africa a different time than we did. 
the story's a lot more complicated, potentially, than we gave it credit for. To quote Chris Stringer, who was one of the people that worked on the paper, Our research reveals that Young Zian II is not Homo erectus, but an early member of the Longi clade and linked to the Denisovans. This changes a lot of thinking because it suggests that by one million years ago, our ancestors had already split into distinct groups, pointing to a much earlier and more complex human evolutionary split than previously believed. Like I said, now we're going to look at all these different species in a new light, and that's going to take a lot of work. So with just one find that pushes us in that direction, it's too quick for even Chris Stringer to say, no, out of Africa is overturned, but he does recognize that this challenges it. Now, one thing that's really frustrating to me is the way that quote unquote science educators that are more skeptical and that are just being buttholes a lot of the time, the way that they've handled this has been absurd. Throwing rocks at people and just being mean instead of, I don't know, looking at it and seeing and figuring out why people are being getting confused about this. It's not that complicated. I, I, I'm not a ninja with this stuff, but I'm not an idiot. When I looked at it, I, I saw what was confusing to me at first, and then I realized this was confusing to other people as well. It didn't take a lot of research for me to figure out what I needed to do in order to actually educate my followers. And that's, I don't know. I, I mean, it seems kind of like that's my job, right? But anyway, it's just really frustrating. I saw this exact same thing happen with Jimmy Corsetti on uh, Twitter a couple of years ago when he said that maybe the Nephilim in the Bible, the giants the Bible speaks of, maybe those were, you know, uh, Denisovans or Neanderthal. And all of these people come yelling at him and saying, you idiot, those are both shorter than humans. How could that possibly have been the giants if they're not as tall as humans? And it's like, you could just say, Hey man, that's a pretty cool idea and those things have big skulls, but that's probably not going to be the giants. You might want to look at different species of hominid that are also huge. Because here's the thing, when you have people that are passionate about something, that are into it, it doesn't take a whole lot to get them diving into a rabbit hole. But if you tell them you're a fucking idiot, they're probably not going to listen to you at all. Even if they do frustrate me, at least this gives me something to do, right? There's a hole, I gotta fill it. So here we are. And at the end of the day, what we've left with is a skull that completely could rewrite human history. Could. It's not necessarily doing it yet, but it stands poised to. So this is really interesting. This could kick not only out of Africa, but could also push the dating of not just our clade, but potentially our species back. And that's a big thing to discuss here is I don't think any scientist would disagree with me when I say that we have not found the oldest Homo sapien skull from the species Homo sapien. We have not found the oldest one of those by a country mile. It's probably hundreds of thousands of years between the ones we found and the oldest ones. But science can't just speculate like that. They they do it a little bit with their Bayesian models, but they need something to go with. And it's pretty pretty sketchy, especially when we're completely changing the paradigm, right? So this is really interesting stuff. But it doesn't say that human beings were a million years old. So I hope that we've got all of our ducks in a row on that stuff, people. And before I go, I just wanted to announce the Quest for Ancient Civilizations in Scottsdale, Arizona is going to be happening December 5th through 7th. I will be there. Many cooler than me people on the internet will be there. And you're going to be there. Link to purchase tickets is down in the description. If you can't afford tickets, you can buy a web pass so you can watch us all talk from the comfort of your home. Thank you guys very much. Click links down below to support the channel, and I will see you next time.